Can I get one? Through the wire. Through the wire. This is the HOH House Party, and I'm your host, Pierre, from Through the Wire. This is a show where we kick it, and we talk about a wide range of topics from sports to music to culture to kicks to what's trending, what's lit, what's lame. We talk about all that. Today, we'll be joined by Atlanta Hawks forward, John Collins. And then we'll also be joined by my boy, Deontay Hitchcock, who is killing the game right now with his new project, Better. Welcome. This is the HOH House Party. Deontay, what up, bro? On behalf of myself and uh, House of Highlights, I want to welcome you to the HOH House Party. Uh, to start things off, I want to do something called This or That. It's a real simple game. I'm going to ask you a question with two things. You choose one or the other, and then you tell us why. I feel like I know you, but for those that don't know, it'll give them a chance to, you know, feel like they, they know you a little bit more before we deep dive into them lyrics. Um, I do it. First thing first, FaceTime or text, man? I mean, depend on the person for real. I'm a FaceTime guy, but can't have anybody that call me on FaceTime and run. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna say FaceTime, but for certain. Okay, okay. So so wifey get the the, the FaceTime. Yeah, yeah, but wifey, if I hit your line, man. it has to be text. Yeah, I'm about to say, I ain't gonna know your number off top, so I, mean, I can't answer that. Instagram or Twitter? Twitter is the funniest app we've ever had. Yo, you real active on Twitter too. I, I love following you on Twitter, but Twitter can be one of those places where it get uh it get out of control. Yeah, but so I'm an agent of chaos myself. I'm cool with that. I'm real interested for this next one. J.R. Smith or Swaggy P. See, I'm a Lakers fan. Are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Lakers fan. So I'm gonna say Swaggy P, even though okay. J.R. is on the Henny. Yeah, Henny guy, man, Henny guy. That that surprised. That caught me off guard. I, something up, something about me felt like you was gonna go J.R. Smith, but I didn't know you were like a Laker fan. So I respect the Swaggy P, man. Shout out to Swaggy P too, man. You need to be on one of them rosters. Jordan ones or Jordan fours? That's tough. That's, that's real tough. Oh, that's tough. I'm gonna say the ones, but I. Hmm, that's tough. I'm really a eleven. I got dang, I'm a eleven to five guy. Mm. I like one, so. Royal joint. I'm gonna say one. One, yeah, I'm a four guy myself. I like elevens. I probably got the most elevens, but fours. Yeah. I don't have no ones. I have no ones none? at all. Yeah, yeah. none. Yeah. I need to get my one game up. Lil Wayne or Andre 3000. Now the reason I ask this is because, like I said, I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a fan first before anything, yeah. and I can hear certain influences in the music. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of times when I listen to your music. It takes me back to when I was a kid growing up in the mixtape era with Wayne mm -hmm. and, and, and trying to catch every metaphor, every line. Yes. And it, it made me be like, damn, Deontay definitely had to be influenced on, on, on Wayne. And I know being from ATL, Outkast 3000, that's automatic. So Wayne or 3K? Wayne. Wayne. Wayne is the greatest person to ever put words together in any form, any facet, anything. I feel like in that era, in that time frame, especially when like Hollywood, when Hollywood divorce came, I feel like like Wayne was the, wow. yeah. yeah, that that's like better than Pac, Biggie, anybody. Like you said, anybody who's ever put words together. Last but not least, and they even got the verses coming up. Rick Ross or Two Chains, man. I had this conversation yesterday. My heart, my heart of hearts wants to say Two Chains, but. I don't think Two Chains has an answer for a lot of Ross's songs. Like, how does how does how does Two Chains answer "Devil in a New Dress"? Like, my the closest thing I think he would have is "Mercy." That's exactly what I was gonna say. That, he would that, have to change yeah. the tempo and go there. And like, I, don't, I don't think he he got that in his bag. Like, and I, I may be tripping. I got to go back and listen to uh, the whole discography again, but. Off the top of my head, I don't think he has an answer for certain raw songs. It's time to, to dive into these lyrics from this beautiful album that you put out better. Uh, I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna come out and say, and I saw you interact with it on Twitter. This has to be a project that needs to be in that album of the year conversation. And I want to say congrats because I saw the, the the Grammy nod for the Dreamville stuff. So congrats and salute on that as well. But the first song I want to dive into is one of the fan favorites. And anytime I, I try to put somebody onto the project, I definitely give them this song first, which is I Got Money. Okay. Remember my mom being broke as a joke. Pay the light bill. Pay the rent with the light bill, shawty. 
they cut off the lights. I, it was dark at the house, but I knew I was bright still, Shawty. And that right there is something that connected with me because I don't know if a lot of people have experienced that decision making. Like my mama has pay, had to pay for the rent with the light bill, so we had the lights off too. So if you can walk us through that and, and the people that may not be able to relate to that, let us know what that's like, bro. Yeah, right. so that was shit, regular life as like a child coming up. Hey, it was points where we had to like, all right, the heat would be up and we would have to like take bowls and heat up the water in the microwave mm. to go bathe, literally. So it's like, it's just little moments like that, that it, it showed you what I guess struggle is and it showed us what struggle was, but at the same time, we aren't the situations we go to go through. Like my mama wasn't that situation, it was just something that she was dealing with at the time. I wasn't in that situation, that was just some shit that I was going through as well. It's like, those situations don't, they make us who we are, but they're not who we are. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's just stuff that build character, and that's the stuff we gotta go through along the way. On the next song, Growing Up, you say, I hope I never let Nas down, but Nas ain't the nigga that I need to hear me. Why? Because he already got a million. But my nigga stuck at the bottom, feeling like nobody really got him. Now, those lyrics are a little bit more self-explanatory, but I wanted to ask you, what's it like dealing with the challenges of making sure you still stay connected to the people that you feel like need to hear you? I've made it to a point where a lot of people around me haven't, but at the same time, though, the, like I said, the people around me haven't necessarily made it as far. Like I haven't become successful enough to the point where I can like change everybody around me's life, life yet. Like my cousins, I still got cousins that's fucked up. I still got like, close people to me are still do, doing and dealing with certain things that I was just dealing with maybe 365 days ago. Yeah, I mean, so I'm about to say for me right now, it's not super hard to still be able to, uh, I guess, speak and relate in those circles because it's still around me, still part of my day to day. But one thing I don't ever want to get to a point where I'm in a bubble. You know I mean, like mm -hmm. Kanye, uh, I'm not gonna say Cole, I'm about to say, but as you get to that level of celebrity, a Drake or a Wayne or whoever the fuck, like, it becomes a time where like, you can't do certain things. Like you can't live like a regular person. And I'm about to say, I know it, it eventually will get to a point like that for me, but I still want to maintain that as long as I can. Cause I don't ever want to lose touch with reality and what reality is for most people. Because I'm about to say, when you listen to music, if, if me and your perspective is so different, I can't even say nothing that's gonna hit your soul. Yeah. It'll never happen because like, I can't relate to what you're going through at the time. So I'm about to say right now, I'm blessed enough to have one foot in, one foot out. And to wrap up the last line from uh, Andrews, you say, my life do a 360 five times on a fucking yearly, just so people near me can numb their pain, you gotta feel me. Long as my mama good, I'm good as can be. That ain't no, that ain't no, that's Lil Bread. That ain't no dope boy. He look like Cuban good in the meat. That little wordplay right there is crazy. But the sacrifices you making as a rapper, what like, what's the actual reality of being a rapper versus the perception that a lot of people on the outside think? Cause I think a lot of people think y'all just live in one big movie scene. I think that is the case for some people. Yeah, I mean, it depends on, I guess, who you want to be at the end of the day. I think being a rapper, and still wanting to have a normal, for lack of a better word, like life, personal life is different because like I might go on tour and I'm gone for three or four months out of the year type shit. And I'm missing time. Like time is very important. I, like my girl, she a nurse, you know what I'm saying? When I get back home, she work night shifts. So she be out literally all night. So we barely get the time to spend with each other when I'm actually here. So to be gone for four months and to miss that type of shit is wild even beyond just my like actual intimate relationship, my love relationship, I mean, my folks, my mom, my brother, I might come home and nigga, shit is completely different from when I left. Yeah. I've missed birthdays, graduations, all sorts of shit. So it's just time, you know what I mean? I think being a rapper is amazing. Like being a rapper and getting to this point is definitely amazing. I'm not gonna take nothing away from my blessed to be able to even be on this call right now, but there's a lot of shit that people don't necessarily see. This one is just, it's just to, to shine some light on your wordplay ability. Uh, Cause I feel like the people that don't know you need to know how you get down. You say, magic how she sucking. No, I ain't timid, no, I ain't Timothy. I ain't had to have no fairy godparents to get off, to get, to get out them Vickies. Yeah. Bro, 
that make me that right there is one of those lyrics that made me want to talk about your influences. We 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 talked about Wayne, but what other influences coming up um, did did you have as a rapper? I think the standard influences music wise, like Jay Z, goddamn Wayne, Dre, all of that shit. I I like being able to to paint a picture that a lot of people can relate to, just in a yeah. creative way. You know I mean, that's it. Like I'm just saying stuff that everybody went through just my own way. I appreciate your time, Deontay. Like I said, on behalf of myself and our House of Highlights, we appreciate you stopping through the HOH uh, house party. Uh, uh, definitely keep yeah. killing it. I'm looking forward to all the new music. I just saw you drop some Guap Dad. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I know the project is coming. I know it is. So I'm gonna definitely be on the lookout for that. John, welcome to the HOH house party, bro. Uh, we're gonna be doing some game I like to call IG Explain. I pulled up a couple of pics off your IG and I'm gonna have you explain it to us because we all know pictures are worth a thousand words. First and foremost, bro, I seen you with the legend, Hank Aaron, the ATL legend as you call them. So I wanted to know what this experience was like for you, seeing that you now are the younger representation of Atlanta. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, so he had the opportunity to come to the practice facility one day while we were, you know, practicing and whatnot. Uh, he came in after, you know, very older gentleman. So he gave, you know, as many words as he could, good words as he could, but it was just, you know, amazing to be in his presence uh, and to hear some of the, the real stories about him. Obviously I knew of him, but I didn't do my research as I did after I met the, the man and um, started living in the city of Atlanta. And, you know, obviously he started meaning a little bit um, different things to me. So uh, it was just an amazing experience. And obviously a legend, like I said before, so um, salute to him. The next picture I got is you and another GOAT, another legend, Jay-Z, man. This, oh. this was one of my favorites. You definitely was on here trying to remain cool. I could see you holding your composure right. a bit. What's the backstory behind this and uh, who, who you listening to? I was just at, a, I was in the Sable Center. We were in LA. This mm -hmm. was pre-draft. So right as I left Wake Forest, um, you know, started to train, trained to go to the NBA. And uh, I think that was one of my first times going to Sable Center and, you know, agency stuff, agents of being agents. And I was able to get on the court get courtside and uh, you know my the, the agents and the people who I was with happened to know Jay-Z and I was like oh you know what I'm saying I was like oh you know fanboying a little bit and he was yeah. like you want to go take a picture and I was like yeah so he, just, he ran me up to him real quick I was like oh yeah so he took the picture obviously you could see a little bit it was in a little bit of a rush but he was yeah. cool enough to stop it stop and pause so um that was dope man obviously you saw I put the I forgot which quote from which song I put in the caption I thought I was cool that day obviously I met Ho. <laughs> Um, yeah. So um, it was it was it was dope, man. The next picture, man, is probably my favorite. I, nothing wrong with, with wholesome love, and I see that you you just recently welcomed a baby boy. Um, oh yes, So sir. I wanted to know that experience for you. No, amazing. Uh, my baby boy Jay welcomed welcomed him to him to the world about uh, going on two months officially. I think it was yesterday or two days ago, a couple days ago. So he's he's doing very well. Uh, big healthy dude, long legs just like his daddy. Um, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Hopefully he got bounced just like his daddy too. Um, yeah. so he's doing good, man, but it's, it's an amazing experience. Obviously he's still real young, still, uh, you know, in this infant, infant stages. So I'm waiting for, you know, till he gets a little older, starts to interact. So I can start interacting with him a little bit more, but it's been amazing. Next one we got y'all, we got you wearing the, the new Atlanta Hawks uniforms. Um, I think personally y'all in history have like top five uniforms ever. Uh, yeah. in any era y'all always fire. Yeah. Uh, we see the Jordan logo on there, but, my main thing was a caption. You, you use hashtag true to Atlanta. And I just wanted to know what is being true to Atlanta for John Collins? Man, true to Atlanta means, you know, you, you're just down for anything Atlanta. You obviously understand the power uh, that Atlanta has within, you know, the, the black community. Uh, and I just feel like as a, you know, a national powerhouse and it's in its own right. And I feel like, you know, people who, who live here and are from here uh, understand that statement a little bit more, um, just being true to, to the roots, the, the, the homegrown roots that are Atlanta and just, uh, just supporting um, the Atlanta culture. Last but not least, as you just mentioned, the black community, I got a picture of you and some of your teammates out there protesting and everything. What was this experience like, you know, being with the people in the city, like you just mentioned, Atlanta, 
but then also, you know, representing and playing for a league like the NBA, who's giving y'all the, the most support, I think, out of any league we've seen. You know, sure. walk us through that experience and going through all of this. Yeah, so first and foremost, you know, I like to, you know, thank Coach Pierce, who's kind of inspired all of us as players. Um, our head coach, the, the Hawks head coach, for anyone who, who isn't aware, but um, Coach has just given us, you know, a, a good platform or a good starting place because he's used his voice a lot um, to speak out and, and use his platform and the platform that the NBA has given all of us. And I felt like it was only right for me to, you know, try to do my best to be authentic, to be myself. Um, and to do something that was real and that meant something to me. So for me, when I went out there to walk with the people of Atlanta, um, it was it was for the NAACP, a march, um, some, you know, a group and an organization that I, I feel like my, my values support. Um, and, you know, obviously I had my teammates with me as well. So it was an amazing experience for, for us just to go out and, uh, and do something like that. It was my first time being out. Um, in, um, in the world or in, you know, in a, in a mass group of people since the, the COVID-19 uh, dilemma has started. So um, it was a very just powering and humbling experience for myself. And like I said, I wanted to do something that was authentic to me. Um, so I waited until I found like, you know, a perfect or the right opportunity for myself to, to express that. So um, like I said, very powerful, very humbling. And I hope I'm using my platform to, to express my values and hopefully people see that and are inspired to you know, speak for themselves as well. And that's a wrap, John. I appreciate you giving us your time. P, appreciate you. Appreciate all the love as well, man. Uh, like you said, we'll be seeing each other soon, man. Much love, bro. Take care. Sir. Now it's time for one of my favorite parts of the show, the rankings. Today, we're going to be ranking my top five Atlanta Hawk highlights. If y'all got anything to say about my highlights or my picks or any hot takes, y'all leave it up with me in the comments. But right here are my top five Atlanta Hawk highlights. As we all know, Jamal Crawford, one of the best crossovers we've ever seen in a game. That's why we call him Jay Crossover. I just love him for his, you know, ability to be creative on the court. And that's why this made my top five personally. You know, into the shot clock to ice the game off the glass. We don't really see that too often. So much love to Jay Crossover. And that's why this is in my top five. Atlanta basketball is relevant today because of one man and one man only. So there's no top five ATL Hawk highlights without Trey Young. Trey Young, that we call him Ice Trey the game for a reason. We see him drop Iggy down and then stare at the three as he knew it was going in. And that's exactly why this is in my top five. Shout out to Trey Young, man. Ice Trey the game. At number three, we got Dominique. There could not be any Atlanta Hawk highlights without the man, the myth, the legend, Dominique Wilkins. One of the best dunkers we've ever seen. Uh, for me personally, I felt like this dunk wasn't one-esque, but wasn't five-esque either. It was right on the spot at three, enough power. And then, the, of course, the dunk over two people is no slight, no slight thing. So shout out to Dominique. But at number three, we got the man, the myth, the legend. At number two, we got Jay Smooth, Josh Smith with the poster over the Bobcats. Man, this dunk was so hard, the Bobcats don't even exist no more. He knocked the Bobcats out of existence. That's why, for me, this is number two. Shout out to Jay Smooth, man. The league misses him. We do not see dunks like this anymore that often. Um, and that's why this is number two for me. Rest in peace to the Bobcats. And last but not least, at number one, we got Joe Johnson with the killer crossover on Keith Bogans. I know I'm a hometown kid, Chicago Bulls, but man, Joe Johnson in the... Damn near end of Keith Bogus' career, man. Somebody need to still check on them ankles. Godly, but shout out to Joe Johnson. We miss you. And there is my top five rankings for the Atlanta Hawk highlights. Thank you all for tuning in. A big thank you to John Collins and shout out my boy Deontay Hitchcock, who's going to be blessing us with a performance of I Got Money featuring Jid. I'm your host, Pierre. Till next time, peace. Shut the fuck up, I got money now. Okay, shut the fuck up, I got, hey, hey, ooh, hey, ooh. Remember they told me that I wouldn't get it, then I wouldn't get it. I ain't had shit but in my pockets, nigga. I was having withdrawals, now I'm at the bank, making deposits, nigga. Shout out to 50, boy, get rich and I trying, ain't no other option, I gotta go get it. Remember my mom being broke as a Joe paid the rent with the light bill shouting. And they cut off the lights, it was dark at the house, but I knew I was bright still shouting. And they cut off the heat and my heart got cold, I'm talking about ice chill shouting. Hey, I knew I was great even though niggas hated, I made it like Mike Will shouting. Went from eating on ramen to getting it popping. Take shit for granted, you know how we rockin', I made it a little easy like straight out of Compton. And now I'm gonna go, ain't no motherfucker stopping. See what I saw coming up from the bottom, made me a menace like Dennis, no rhyming. Getting this shit ain't no 
motherfucking problem, so I get on my gallon for fucking around, nigga, five the blunts. For all of the time we were late on the rent at the first of the month. It was PB and J every day, now we eating no conch for lunch. Ayy, now I walk in the store with my mama and tell her to buy what she want. I ain't hearing that shit that you talking about. Shut the fuck up, I got money now. Hey, shut the fuck up, I got money now hey. I ain't had no money, my niggas was hungry My pockets was empty like chip for like sun And my future was pretty, my pad was ugly But now I'm back in my bad little buddy We got this shit out the motherfucking muddy Now we want the freshest, but we want not bummy That shit ain't no joke when your money be funny So I had to jump Oh, ain't had no money to help out my mama, that shit had me frustrated, shout it. Looking back at the sack at the end of the month, like my nigga, we just made a shout it. Now the bad bitch be trying to fuck, get them whole butt naked, shout it. I ain't even trying to fuck on my ex no more, tell that bitch I done upgraded, shout it. Find out what I was worth and I put on the tax. Been my foundation, no fence and no Mac. Stay out the way, go get money and step in. My mama still working, I cannot relax. You know these niggas goof, I'm turn to the max. I got your babe on my side, where the Zach? And I was born, quit, dread, mad, nigga, we done been broken, we ain't going back, nigga, find the all of the times we laid on the rent at the first of the month, ayy. It was PB and J every day, now we eat no cunts for lunch, ayy. Now I walk in the store with my mama and tell her to buy what she want. I ain't hearing that shit that you talking about. Shut the fuck up, I got money now.